Sector 3 are working on an Audi TT Sport Cup and we've got early access and here we are at a track that they don't actually race the uh, Sport Cup car but we thought why not let's take it to the desert at Laguna Seca and uh, well this car is absolutely bananas and I'll tell you why but first we'll go into the details now the Audi TT is based on the Audi TTS road car with the uh, same engine, though I'm sure the race car they'll have souped it up and made it so it only runs for a couple of races before needing to be replaced, but a 306 BHP 2.0 litre turbo four-cylinder engine uh, with, of course, its six-speed S-Tronic dual-clutch paddle shift box. I met a woman with a dual-clutch paddle shift box once. The relationship didn't last too long, but anyway, we're here and... On the track, uh, at the back of the field, I thought it'd be more interesting to start at the back of the grid and try and punt our way through the AI. I've set the AI on 100%, um, basically because I don't have the skill to beat them on the highest setting from the back of the grid. It has to be said, I did do some races before this with the AI on 120, because you have to go to 120 in room to get the AI on the hardest setting. I don't know why 100 isn't the hardest setting. And they actually put up a good fight. I'm sure if you're an alien, you'll destroy them. But if you're sort of just above average skill, on 120, they're really good fun uh, and good to do the qualifying with. But look at that, locking up the brake in there. Trying to squeeze on through. We're trying to get through the grid. We're also learning the track of this car whilst we're driving. So, uh... It's always good to turn up at a track in a car you're not familiar with and just drive like a buffoon. Interestingly, with the Audi TT Cup car, it's uh, actually front-wheel drive, whereas I think, if I've got my facts correct, which I probably haven't, the road car is all-wheel drive. Uh, I assume they had to make the uh, the race car version front-wheel drive so that the car could be used in, in different race series, or just so uh, maybe it cuts down costs. Uh, and also, just to torture people, because front-wheel drives are horrendous. Having said that, though, and uh, this is the surprise that, that surprised me with this vehicle. Look at that, terrible. Missed the brake point, flopped the car around. I, I look like, uh, well, the car, with me driving it, looks like a fish that's flopping around a fisherman's deck in a thunderstorm at the moment. We will, I promise, by the next lap, we, we will have tightened things up and got to grips with the car on this track a little bit. The interesting thing with this car, I despise front-wheel drive vehicles. Uh, terrible to drive, but... Out of front wheel drive cars, this has to be, we were punted off by the AI there, this has to be one of the nicest front wheel drive cars, and I'll tell you why. Apart from it being named the TT, which, uh, you know, who doesn't like a bit of T, double T, the actual handling characteristics of this vehicle are, are quite interesting. When you get on the brakes, quite commonly, like, like other front wheel drive cars, the rear end, oh dear. We'll, we'll pretend that didn't happen. The rear end will absolutely uh, swing around. It's like you've got a... Uh, it's like ice skating with a, with a partner on your hand and you're flinging them around. As soon as you put your brakes on, the back of the car, it's coming out. Now, it's really nice and progressive how it comes out in uh, this rendition of the vehicle or this specific car in race room racing experience it doesn't just swipe out with you having no control of it at all it comes out really nice and uh, gradual to an extent that on the braking you can actually use this to get a nice line into corners and uh, it's, it's just really satisfying managing the the back end on braking obviously with most corners and most situations, you want to keep the car in line and you want to thread it through nice and gently and not be sliding around like a like a squid that uh, somehow find itself on, on a on an ice rink. You don't want to be doing that normally, obviously for speed, but for fun, it's actually good. And also for this occasional corner where you where you want to sort of get the back end out a little bit to be able to get on the power because the way front wheel drive cars when you get the power as well the front obviously hooks up and it draws the back back in and and it just if you don't do it right it flops around so with this vehicle the balance between how you can play with the slip of the rear and how you can then apply little bits of throttle to pull the front back in it actually makes it quite a satisfying challenge and something Really, really quite different from your standard real-wheel drive car and also quite different from your standard front-wheel drive car that you might find uh, with other front-wheel drive vehicles like the Clio Cup, for example. But look at this. We're slowly we're slowly getting to grips with the car. We, we, we'll get there eventually. I'll slam on the brakes there. 
as I say, the AI on 100%, they, they break a little bit too early and they don't carry enough speed through the corners, but that is my fault. If you put them on 120, they actually break pretty uh, close to where I'd expect uh, human players. Not aliens, but moderately good human players to be breaking for these corners. Look at that, side to side. We'll have a little peek. Is he there? He's still there. We need the Oculus Rift in this situation. Looking left. No, there he is in the mirror. Getting a bit better on the braking. Now, you can actually break uh, surprisingly late for this first corner. And again, you <laughs> can be a lot smoother than that. One thing that really, I think I do it here, you have to be really careful with this car, is that if you lock the front and the rear at the same time, you, you're going off. You, you're like a penguin on a glacier off the track. You can lock the fronts. Well, you can't really lock the fronts because uh, they, they don't lock up with this, with this vehicle because I believe it's got full-on ABS. Uh, but if you stamp on the fronts and you don't lose, lock the front and the rear or, or get really low on the front and rear grip, you can get away with it. It's just if you get all four wheels uh, in a slide, you're, you're in trouble. It's more from just throwing the car laterally into corner than it is uh, what you do on the brakes. Look at that. On the outside... Sliding up there, bit of uh, bit of car contact there. The AI putting up a little bit of a fight, slowly getting better. What's nice as well is that the the car has uh, shed loads of grip. If you actually brake properly before you go into the corner, you can trail brake with this. But if you brake properly, the car has a really satisfying turning with it actually biting the track and it. When you get it right and sort of start nailing it from corner to corner, it makes it a really satisfying and smooth car to drive. Again, often I find with front wheel drive cars that they kind of can feel a bit agricultural in their approach, um, ragging the front wheels to pull the car around the corners. And Although it's obviously always faster to be smooth with a vehicle and flow through corners, certain front wheel drive cars in various sims just to me just just they don't they don't have that elegance that you can get with uh, real world rear rear wheel drive cars but this car once you get into the flow of things and get into it it, it feels quite nice and the force feedback actually using the uh, thrustmaster t300 rs of course thrustmaster love to name their wheels after terminators uh, that's just their company policy i'm not sure why they do that i guess it makes things sound uh, sophisticated but the force feedback with the T300 RS, really good with this vehicle. We can go through the force feedback settings. And I'll do another video. We'll go through the force feedback settings and uh, look at that. Um, but you can feel the, the traction loss. You can feel the loading of the car around the corners. You can feel the front hook up when you when you get on the accelerator. And uh, strangely, I'm not sure if this case one of the similarities, but Sector 3's uh, racing racing experience seems to use the uh, the rumble on the Club Sport V2 pedals, which I'm using, and that's really uh, effective in knowing if you you know you're going over the the brake limit and threshold. But there we go, <laughs> it's the end of the race. Caught myself by surprise. I thought we had a couple more laps to go, so we didn't win that from the back. But um, this is literally the the introductory video to to this car. We're going to do another video soon, looking at it more. Uh, but there you go. That's the Audi TT Sports Cup. Let's get onto another video of it and uh, check out that. We'll go into a little bit more depth, talking about how it handles. But don't tell Sector 3 that we uh, we snuck into their offices and stole this car. I hope, hope they haven't noticed. We'll, we'll just have to keep it secret. Don't, don't tell anyone. But I'll see you in the next video that we do. Thanks for watching this one. Uh, I hope you found it enjoyable. I hope you could uh, get around the bad driving in that without smashing your face into a brick wall and uh, having to go to the hospital. But uh, we'll see you in the next video, as I say. Thanks for watching, and uh, goodbye. Subscribe and like. Goodbye.